Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, the bonus part. Yeah, starting this one off a little awkwardly, apparently Grifter had one more tale that I never talked to him about. So let's go ahead and read it, even though I'm sure by now you've forgotten all of his other tales. Oh boy. Anyway, the magical map. For a mere five coins, yeah, alright, whatever. The heroes knew that the seal might not last forever and they sought to make the Crystal Stars available to one who might need them. So before going to their individual dooms, they made a map to all the stars. And to prevent an evil force from misusing this map, they placed it in a box that could only be opened by the pure of heart. So, yep, there's that little last piece of plot right there. The heroes, right when they were, you know, cursed to their cursed boxes, they put the location of all the stars on a map for somebody, you know, pure of heart to find. Or at least open the box where it was hidden. And that's where whoever it was that was over here in the beginning of the game, possibly Beldum, gave the box to Peach for her to open. Amazing how things come together. Anyway, onward to a cameo appearance from a Paper Mario 1 character. Okay, so here we are back in Poshley Heights, and what was sort of ruined in a previous part, or at least when I was doing some of the Trouble Center Troubles, we have Lady Bo, a character from Paper Mario 1. Let's go ahead and talk to her. It is you, isn't it, Mario? Well, it's been quite a while, hasn't it? I've come here with Bootler. Yes, a little vacation in Poshley Sanctum. I hadn't left the mansion in ages. I figured it was time to turn some heads on the road. Guahiha. I always hated that laugh. What a nice surprise to see you. Feel free to be overwhelmed by my beauty. And pompous as ever. Let's talk to Bootler the Butler. Lady Bo, your beauty is like the song of a nightingale in the evening. Indeed. I feel you've grown to a fine young girl who'd make your ancestors proud. Considering she's a ghost, I don't think she's going to be growing anymore. I just wanted to talk to her to make sure the text had not changed. So, yep. She's from Paper Mario 1. Kind of pointless for me to show her off, considering there are like some other things in this game I won't be showing off, namely uh, what changes on the Excess Express after you've beaten it. But it's re nothing really, just new passengers, new text, nothing major. You can't do anything else really except just visit the shop to get some of the same items that were there when you were first there. Um, also, yeah, I'm not showing off Chet Rippo, but all you do is just pay him to just move your stats around, namely your FP and BP and all that jazz and HP, so, yeah, there's really no point to talk to him either unless you're just not happy with your stats and you just want to change them around. And, um, what else am I not showing off? Hmm, it's really all that comes to mind, but, I mean, it's nothing really important that you're missing out on. So yeah. Oh, there's also that last shine sprite that I couldn't find, but I'm not too fussed about that because I highly doubt I will be using Miss Mouse for the Pit of 100 trials. So, yep, not too worried about that either. But I think I've covered all bases pretty much. Um... I don't think there's any other, like, special characters or special text. Oh, there's that guy in the underground we can pay, but... Like I said, if you pay him for his little tails, they're just randomized, so... I'd be giving him a fortune just to see different tails I've never seen before. And I'm not showing off all the different recipes, because... That'll just take forever. I'm just gonna see if he has anything new... Not really, although I kinda want that jam and jelly. Screw it, I'll go ahead and take the jam and jelly. Why not? Alright. Well then, onward to the next thing that I was going to show off. But before I do that, let me go ahead and check my numbers. I'm addicted to the lottery. So close. So close. And by so close, I mean not close at all. Anyway, Pianta Parlor. Might as well just show off the different games you can do here. Since I never showed off the parlor in Super Paper Mario. I guess it's never too late, but... 
Yeah, I'm lazy like that. Which has to give us back our Piantas. Alright, and now she takes all of our members card. Yeah, we played two game, played both game. Alright, so anyway, the playing game, and I need more Piantas. Yeah, I was not prepared for this. And that should be enough. I hope. Hopefully I will be able to make up the Piantas I use. Alright, anyway, playing game. Yes, it will cost me ten Piantas. I should have read the rules. Just, you know, for the game, because me saying the rules, not as good as the actual game, but pretty much you just want to guide your plane, you know, as best as you can to just a good multiplier. And that's all it is, just try to make as far of a distance as you can. As you can see, I am not the best at flying my plane. Eh, oh, I want the times two. No, no, no. Ah, crap. Well, I made it 352. What units of measure is that? What, what units of measure is that? Feet? Yards? Inches? Miles? Uh, seriously, game. Do not forget your units. Oh, yeah, I get nothing because I landed on minus 15. I suck. Huh. I like how I'm in third place, yet I receive no piantas. That's the way the cookie crumbles. No, I will not continue. I'm just going to cut my losses. Yeah. I suck at the playing game. That's why I never play it. Ever. Okay. So anyway, onward to the next game. The paper game. Cost 10 pianos, but first the rules. I'm not skipping them this time. Okay, the paper game. In this game, you have to get paper thin to avoid the wind and get to the finish. If you don't turn paper thin as soon as the wind starts blowing, you'll get blown away. If you fall off the track, you'll lose. The higher you place, the more pianos you win. And there are also bonuses associated with your play, so finish it as quick as possible. The quickest way to get to the end is to choose paths that don't require jumping. Good luck. Yeah, I don't really have much of an opinion on this one. I'm, it's rather easy, but at the same time, you can screw up. But, eh, whatever. You will see. You will see. The paper game. Oh, we're racing Luigi! Yeah, see, it's easy to just get a head start on them. Alright. Ooh. I'm... Might not win this one. No, I am in second place. Okay, come on. I might have it. And... Yep, okay, I won. Yeah, it's rather easy. Rather easy. Just gotta... You know, be on your toes and watch the fans. And I get 20 pianas. 15 for, uh, being a, well, no, 15, what, is it 15 for finish and then the bonus for, huh. I wasn't paying attention. The place bonus was 5, and whatever. We're not going to continue. I don't think the track changes. I'm not too certain on that. But yeah, whatever, that was the paper game. Anyway, the tube game. Rules. Okay, the tube game. In this game, you have to roll up into a tube to navigate the difficult courses. You'll have to be able to dodge obstacles and navigate narrow paths. The faster you reach the end, the more pianas you earn. And if you finish without falling off the track, you'll earn a technical bonus. Pick up as many pianas on the track as you can to boost your total. I feel this is the best game to get pianas in, really. Well, just... Well, okay, technically the paper game, if you constantly finish first, I mean, that's, you know, 20 free pi pianas right there, but this game, because of the pianas around the track, and plus it's not even really all that hard. But, eh, whatever. Okay, so we got three minutes to do this. We got hurdles in. Let's jump in, go under that one, go around that, go through those. We got a little turn right here. 
Got the major, and then we got steps. Not that bad. Then we got a piano right down there. Let's go ahead and grabbed it. Okay, and now we got thin platforms. Oh, there's a piano on the bottom one. I'm not too fussed about that. Okay. Got crap. Well, I'm not getting that technical bonus. I always screw up right here. Okay, through the moving platforms, downhill. Didn't get that lone piano right there. Hurdles. Oh, crap. And what am I being careful about now? I'm not getting that technical bonus. We got this right here. Not that hard. And... Done. Yeah, three minutes is more than enough time. But I guess they just want to be lenient with people that just, you know, take their time. I remember this yielding more piantas. Huh. I really thought that yielded more piantas than the paper game. Unless that technical bonus... Well, no, the technical bonus, I guess that would only be five. Instead of four. So I, I guess I just wasn't speedy enough. Ah, oh, well, whatever. I'm not going to dwell on that. Okay, so the boat game. Rules for the boat game. Boat game in this game, you become a boat and dodge obstacles as you sail to the finish. Drifting boats don't stop immediately, so keep a steady hand on the tiller. The faster you finish, the more pianos you win. We get a technical bonus for finishing without hitting the whirlpools. I doubt I'm going to get that technical bonus here. Pick the warborn pianos to boost your winnings. Good luck. Yes, we will play, because I'm showing off all the games at least once. Well, I kind of fast-forwarded through the course, but whatever. Alright, so we're sailing on the sea as a paper boat. Just avoiding these... Okay, avoiding the barrels. Kind of doing a bad job at that. Now we got whirlpools. We gotta avoid those, too. Okay, I wasted a lot of time just going over there into no man's land. The whirlpools... Okay, that... Well, I'm not getting that technical bonus. Or was it for just hitting my oh, crap? Yeah, I'm not getting that bonus. I am not getting that bonus because I suck at being a boat. Crap. Okay, and we are finished. It's not a complete lap, it's just that? Wow, my memory was really hazy about these games. Hmm. Okay then, I guess the paper game is the most cost effective. Because if you do well on that, you always get 10 pianos. And then there's the slots, but... Eh, just typical slot machines. They're never really worth it. Wow. It would have been just so wonderful if I would have got all sevens. Yeah, well, well, we'll just go ahead and do five. I don't know if there's a trick to getting all sevens on these slots. I just do what I do on any game where there are slot machines, and I just spam the button. I'm just really hoping I can get all sevens on camera. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, all right. Well, let's just try strategy. All right, there's no real strategy. I'm just pressing buttons. Can I win something? All right, screw this. I'll just go through all my pianos. Oh, yay, I won three. I am a happy camper. All right, one more. I am addicted to gambling. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll take those. All right, well, we'll go for it again. Why not? Okay, I've hit my lucky stride. Let's see if this slot machine will show us some love. No, it doesn't. I should have stuck with this one. Did I just ruin my streak? Yes, I did. Alright, alright. Just a couple more times. Yay! 
Yay, I did not make a profit at all, but I'm just gonna stop now. And all right, just showing off some of the prizes you can get. Yeah, like I said, this is the only place to get cake mix. You can get super shrooms here, maple syrup, power rush, power smash, power jumps. Huh, I don't think I have a power jump badge. You got refund, refund some coins if you lose an, uh, use an item in battle. Super appeal, hammer throw, multi-bounce, quake hammer, tornado jump, jam and jelly, ultra shroom, HP plus, FP plus, HP plus P, gold bar times three, and money, money, make more coins appear after battle. Yeah, I believe uh, this is the only place you can get the money, money badge. Not in entirely 100% sure, but something is telling me that yes, this is in fact the only place you can get that badge. So yeah, that's just what you can get here. Pretty much you're only going to want to come here for cake mix and, you know, just for some of the higher up badges if you don't want to, you know, waste coins on them. But if you, if you feel like spending, you know, hours of your time just here grinding pianas for those badges, hey, more power to you. But all right, anyway, I have uh, nothing else to show. I guess I could go up to the bat shop up on the roof, but eh, there's, there's nothing there to show off. There really isn't. I guess there's nothing left to do, but read up about some Super Luigi. Yeah, I went ahead and bought all the Super Luigi books. Mm -hmm. Okay. Time for some high-intensity readings from Luigi, book one, too popular now on sale. Have you ever experienced a time when no matter how hard you tried, you failed, and the time you spent felt wasted? Oh yes, I know that feeling all too well. Ever feel such pains of regret? Try to remember this tale, the story of a young man's quest to save a sweet princess. So for Luigi, volume one, the quest begins. The day dawned like any other, but little did Luigi know the letter he was about to receive would forever change his destiny. Sir Luigi, danger besets us on all sides, and we beg your help. The foul chestnut king has stolen our treasure from our fair princess. The letter was from Minister Crepe of the Waffle Kingdom, a man aware of Luigi's many adventures. He knew only Luigi could save him. Charged with this dire task, Luigi wasted no time curtailing the heroic meal he was making. Then he packed for his deadly journey. Knowing that his older, though less talented brother was out on a no doubt inconsequential errand. Wow. Somebody is really embellishing the facts. Luigi took a moment to leave a note. Mix a keel mango with a peach peach to whip up a fruit parfait. Hmm. Hint hint for if you want to go to Zesty. Alright. These cryptic words were all Luigi wrote before leaving. Upon reaching the Waffle Kingdom, Luigi was greeted by a pure misery on an endless flow of tears. Uh, no, an unendless flow of tears for the kidnapping of Princess Eclair. Arriving in the castle, Luigi was greeted by Mr. Crepe, who carefully handed him a compass based with only one intact section. Our land had a second treasure, the Marvelous Compass. Wait, no, oh, okay, I read that correctly. Find it seven parts and find Eclair. So it began. To be continued. All right, so far so good. Super Luigi Book Two, Manager's Pick. Ooh, Manager's Pick. Was this also an Oprah's Book Club? Hmm, oh, Super Luigi Volume Two, Allies and Adventure. So little warm, Luigi muttered, the sweat dripping from his brow as he followed the compass up Rumble Bump Volcano side. Must find the secret grotto. While Luigi had guts to spare, he did he did need a guide, and he found one in Bluey, a blooper he met in town. Brave Bluey joined Luigi and instantly proved to be invaluable. With his aid, Luigi bested a savage statue that protected the treasure. That treasure was none other than a piece of the Marvelous Compass, a piece that pointed west to Plump Belly Village. The second Luigi saw Plump Belly Village, he knew something was amiss. All was well, and Luigi soon learned the reason why from the mayor. The town was at the mercy of a sinister serpent who demanded sacrificial lasses. Running with indignation, Luigi formed a team of liberators. A fierce Baba warrior named Jerry okay, joined his crew and chose, not surprisingly, to stick with Luigi for the duration of his quest for Eclair. Fortified by his allies, Luigi strode on onto the lair of the beast, a foul two-headed snake. No time to think, Luigi sprang forth. Twin heads snapped at his heels, fangs dripping venom. Then his one mouth gaped wide to swallow Luigi, the other crept behind. Our hero sensed the treachery and fainted before leaping. The heads, col uh, the heads collided and the beast ate itself. That doesn't seem physically possible, but whatever. The prize, a compass piece. The villagers begged their savior to stay with them, but a grim-faced Luigi pressed bravely onward. All right, Super Luigi 3, this month's best seller. Ooh, Super Luigi Volume 3, The Voice of a Princess. Dauntless Luigi's next test, uh, yeah, test, came in the form of a kart race on Circuit Break Island, where he won both the contest and a compass piece. 
And Luigi was never all that great at Mario Kart, so I don't even know how he was able to win that. The race was fraught with danger, but Luigi pressed through adversity to win. All viewers were awed by Luigi's revolutionary racing style. The mechanic who built Luigi's racing machine, a buzzy beetle named Torque, was so stunned by Luigi's race techniques that he joined him. Reinvigorated, Luigi set sail for Jazzafraz Town, where he met his stage debut. No, made his stage debut. Hazy, a noted Daisy producer, gave Luigi a key role. Playing the part of an Earth spirit to pure perfection, Luigi stole the show. Hazy's faith in Luigi's natural acting talents was rewarded. The performance won a prize, which yielded another compass piece. Hazy turned from teacher to pupil, joining Luigi on his quest. It was at this time that Luigi's heart, usually draped in the cool comfort of a hero's resolve, began to warm with thoughts of Princess E. Player. This came to be because every time the magic compass pointed to a new place, her gentle words rang in his ears, touching them to his very soul. The voice spoke of eternity of stars in the heavens. It wept for those blind to love. It gave comfort in the face of fear and loneliness. Though he had never seen her, our hero was tormented by visions of this fair-hearted maiden. All he could do was press onward. The compass pointed toward rapturous ruins. Only two parts of the compass awaited, and Eclair had one. To be continued. Alright, Super Luigi 4. The Shards of Truth. And this is the fan favorite! Foot sore and weary, Luigi finally found the rapturous rooms beyond Grimble Forest. Within them, time and space were lost in nothingness. Within the pale emptiness, Luigi found a young sleeping boy our hero called out gently, and the youth woke from his long, long slumber. My name is Cranberry. I've waited for you for the last thousand years, the boy went on to tell Luigi the secret truths of the ancient land. He said that the marvelous compass had been created by the ancient Luff people, who used its powers of foretelling to rule the world. But the Luff Empire was then cursed by the compass and fell into ruin. The survivors dismantled the compass and hid its pieces. Cranberry was the last of the ancient race. His role was to wait until one with a noble heart came to take the burn of the future. Sounds kind of like the plot to uh, Thousand Year Door, but okay. None but Luigi could have shouldered this weight. The boy gave him the compass piece and said, Fear the cuss, but find your eclat. Luigi accepted the part. The boy's words burned into his brain, his duty fulfilled. The boy began to fade into a blank nothingness. As he faded from sight, a look of joy lit Cranberry's face. As Luigi gave both boy and ruins vanished, leaving our hero in a dark wood. With six of the parts united, the compass now pointed to the final part, to the quest's end, to Hate Song Tower, and then her voice spoke. Princess Eclair's voice begged for help from the void, pleading for a hero. Luigi's heart burst aflame to be continued. Okay. And now, Super Luigi 5. Coming soon to theaters! Huh. Don't think I'm looking forward to that movie, but okay. Journey's end! At long last, Luigi crossed the threshold of Hate Song Tower. Luigi rallied his alley. Ugh. Ugh. God, I screwed that up. Luigi rallied his allies. Will we defeat the Chestnut King? We must! Friends by his side, Luigi at last faced the failed Chestnut King, but then he heard a voice and spun to see the fair Princess Eclair. She told our hero the painful truth. The evil Chestnut King was actually her true love, made monstrous by Crepe in a bid for the throne. At that moment, the villainous Crepe appeared. The marvelous compass, please, hand it over, and the Luff Empire will rule again. Mwaha! Luigi and co. were no match for the might of Crepe, their true enemy. But then the compass piece in Eclair's tiara shone forth. It bestowed the future sight on Luigi, knowing Crepe's every move, he smoked the fiend with his mallet. And with that, it was all finally over. Luigi and his friends parted, leaving the Waffle Kingdom in peace, but Luigi regretted not gazing further into the future. He longed to see the Wafflers gathering on Princess Eclair's wedding day. He wanted to see her beauty and who stood at her side. But it was not to be. Luigi went back to his humble home, which made exactly as he had left it. A cold comfort for his heavy heart. Taking up a book he had been reading, Luigi tried to read, but his long trial had sapped his strength, and he soon fell asleep. Luigi dreamt of his friends and his beloved Princess Eclair. As sleeping, Luigi spoke, I shall return. Ha! No, you shall not. The end. So, yep. That's what happened. When Luigi went to save Princess Eclair, her heart already belonged to the... I already forgot his name that fast. The Chestnut King, yes. So, yeah. Luigi... Well, I, I can't really say friend zone. Well, alright. Hero zoned. He did not get the girl. But he was too ashamed to tell Mario. So he just, you know, kept it blunt. Oh well. Oh well. And with that... This bonus part comes to an end. Yeah, not the most eventful one, but oh, I got an email. All right, well, we can end on an email then. Why not? All right. Oh, it's from Gob. Throat bomb. Okay. Um, is this right? Did I just type or what? Yeah, okay. So, hey, I was so happy you got me that honey candy. My voice came back and everything. 
but maybe I was a little too jolly. I started shouting and now I lost my voice again. I'm resting now. So yeah, there may not be much here in Far Outpost, but at least we got snow. Yeah, we have snow bomb fights here. We put tiny bob bombs inside our snowballs so that they explode when they hit. It's super dangerous. Yes, it really does sound super dangerous, which makes it super cool. No, it just sounds super dangerous and kind of inhumane to the small bob bombs. Unfortunately, it also makes it super illegal. Yeah, which is pretty lame. But come visit anyway. Later, Gob. All right, because yeah, he is right. Like things that are cons like when, when something is considered illegal, it that is kind of lame. Because they're usually very fun things, except drugs. Don't do drugs, kids. They're illegal for a reason. So, yep, with this rather uneventful part coming to an end, see you all next time where we take on the pit of 100 trials. Ah, man. I am not looking forward to that. Well, time to make a lot of preparations. See you all then. Goodbye. Yep, that's where it was this whole time. Right here. Yeah, uh, I actually didn't figure that out on my own. Um, I actually had a little help from, I believe it's Merlovely. I, I don't know. I don't really talk to her that often, so that's why I don't really know her name. Uh, it's the fortune teller you can pay to tell you where shine sprites or uh, star pieces are located or just where you need to go to next. Yeah, I, I figured I might as well just pay her the 10 coins to tell me where that shine sprite is and just go find it. Or at least just, you know, if it wasn't too far off, just go ahead and get it. And yeah, it wasn't too far off. So I went ahead and got it. Yay! Also, apparently, there are, uh, 50, well, not 50 star pieces left, but, like, 41 left that I never got for me to purchase all of the badges from Dazzle. But yeah, there's just 41 left, and I will have found all the star pieces. I am not worried about finding these 41 star pieces. I am not worried at all. Yeah. So some of those badges will not be gained, but let me see. Nah, I'm not going to miss them. I'm not going to miss them. Well, flower saver could be handy. Don't I already have some flower savers on hand? Just checking. No, I have flower finder. Oh, no, I do have flower savers. Yeah, I got those on hand, so I don't really doubt at all. But yeah, this is the chick I talked to, and I really, for the life of me, cannot remember her name. Uh, yep, okay, it was Merlovely. Alright. And just for the hell of it, I'll go ahead and show off uh, what happens when you pay her to find where something is. I am definitely not paying that. Especially since this is the end game, so yeah, she's not going to tell me anything I don't know. All right, star pieces, why not? Star pieces, yeah, I understand, I shall look for what you seek. Focus, focus, focus. Kadabra, da abra, hullabaloo. Paka, puka, peekaboo. Ah, uh, ah, star, show me what I seek. Those are some of the worst magical words I have ever heard in my life. Yeah, you gotta go through all that and then she'll just give you some vague hint on where to find it. I see a star piece. It is an east rogue port. You use Yoshi to cross the canal and climb to the roof. It pops out of a strange panel that flips when you spin jump near it. Oh. Okay, a spin jump platform on the roof. And yeah, pretty much I can pay her, what, uh, 40 times five, so that's, yeah, 200 more coins to figure out where the other star pieces are. 
But then again, I don't know if she uh, raises her rates the more you go to her, so... Yeah, you know, there, there's always that if, if you're stuck. There's also game facts if you're stuck, so... Yeah, there's that. Alright, so we're gonna end for reals this time, powering up Miss Mouse. No teammate left behind. So, yep, the last time we will see this. Go ahead and power her up. Why not? The last time we will sh see Shizubi. Oh, man. I'm gonna miss seeing Shizubi. And with that, Miss Mouse is now less useless. I'm still not going to use her. She also now has 25 HP. And this move that costs way too much FP. Seriously, I... Yeah, it costs the most. But this move, Smooch, replenish Mario's HP with a friendly kiss. Yes, for 10 FP, you can heal. Not really worth it, in my opinion. Since, you know, I accidentally picked up the strange sack, so... You know, I, I can carry 20 items now, so... Yeah, I don't really need to rely on Smooch to heal myself. Alright, for reals this time. Thank you all for watching, and see you next time when I tackle the Pit of 100 Trials. Ooh. That's gonna be... That's gonna be something. It's gonna be something. Alright, goodbye.